she declined. No, did she mind? I don't think so. It's 6.20 a.m. on Friday morning before the race, and I'm on my way to cut the van because we have some very complicated logistics for getting to and from the track for this race. I'm also on my way to Dartford Karting to collect some parts for Danny, who's joining us this weekend. Danny's a driver we met during the ADX test in the Rotax, and he's decided to join us for his first GX UK round. But he doesn't have a cart yet, and the weekend is now. So this afternoon at Fullback, I'm going to help build his car to get it to a stage where he can actually race it and hopefully practice tomorrow. So, let's go. So I've now got the van and heading back to my house to collect all of our equipment. It's going to be interesting, trying to load all that on my own. Then to the track, then we're going to set up and then try and build Danny's car. Here we go. Okay, so van is loaded. We are now on the way to the track. Did you see how strong I was lifting those go-karts into the van on my own? Because Alex couldn't be bothered to come and help. Now I'll go and set our pit area up on my own after driving the van to the track on my own. Totally abandoned by my best friend so far this weekend. I'm such a hero. So with our awning built and all of the equipment unloaded, I eagerly awaited the 4pm arrival of Danny. However, a hold up at work meant he couldn't get to the circuit until later in the evening. You've been hearing all day on my video about this go-kart we're going to be building at 4 o'clock today, which is going to give us no time to do it. Well, it's now 7.43 and we're still going to try, so let's do it. So with the very kind help of Matthew Roberts, George Massey and Russell Endine, we set about inboarding Danny's rear axle, drilling out the bolt on his seized left rear hub, fitting engine mounts and engine itself, lubricating all the bearings and finishing as much of the cart as possible before the darkness set in. And although we did ultimately run out of time in the evening to get the cart completed, we got it to a state where it would be possible at least to get Danny on track the next day. Well, it's practice day morning. I'm out just having a cup of tea. I'm gonna wander around our little campsite area. We're not camping, we're in a house over here. This place is called Woodland Waters, it's very nice. So we didn't finish building Danny's cart last night. It just got too dark. The plan was to get the lion's share of it done in the daylight and then just maybe have a very little bit left over today. As it stands, there's actually a lot left over today. And I've obviously also got to do my own cart, get that ready, so see you at the track. Okay, so I left my fancy camera back at the hotel today, so I'm going with the phone. We are now prepped for the first practice session. I've done quite a lot of work on Danny's car. It's not ready for the session yet, so he's got a bit to do, but he's got a seat in. Um, we've done the inboarding on the axle. The engine now has mounts. I've filled it with oil. I've fitted a new clutch. So his, uh, his car will be ready at some point today, so Danny should get out, which is not for the first session. We're gonna be out for the first session in a moment, and I'm looking forward to seeing what my new setup that I've put on the car is gonna be like and what this circuit is like in warmer temperatures and brand new sticky practice tyres. Let's go. If you're enjoying this video so far, please consider giving it a like. Still not on the fancy camera, sorry about that, we're still on the phone camera, but here we go. Here's Danny's car, looking a little bit more together. The only thing he's missing is wheels, and he's doing that right now. So we've now got a working engine, now we've got an engine that runs, we've got fuel, the correct fuel, not two-stroke anymore, in the tank. I've done the throttle cable, I've done the throttle cable, Danny. I've got to say done now your pedal might not be in exactly the position you want but we can adjust that i've put a chain guard on might not pass scrutineering at the moment but we'll get onto that when we have to so just 
run with it, it's fine. Just make sure your wheels are on tight and you can literally put this down and go and drive it now, sir. There we go. We still need, we still need. Oh, a keyway. I'll go get a keyway. I'm finished now for the day. There's still another session, but I just want to really prep the car, get it looking really nice and make sure it's ready for scrutineering, which happens like from now. Got to fix some wheels. Going well. I think we're certainly one of, if not the fastest out there. Warning hasn't blown away yet. Time to prep the car and be ready for the morning. So it's Saturday evening, we've spent the day doing testing, building carts, fixing carts, holding down awnings, trying to stop them from blowing away. Looks like it's gonna pour with rain now. Look at those clouds. So we're having a cider and chilling out, doing some final work on the carts. Something inside so strong. I've been demonetized because that was such a good rendition. Yeah. Something I'm gonna make you a star. You're, you're a f Why? Did she decline? No, did she mind? I don't think so. And on Thursday and Friday and Saturday. Go cards on Sunday. Goose. Duck. Pheasant. Alex has been overtaken for the first time today, but not the last. Go <laughs> <laughs> in. Hey Brad, how about put the camera away and help? <laughs> but then I wouldn't get this footage. You got plenty of footage of me bending over last night, mate. <laughs> I hope the camera picked that up. What the f is that? We can't miss that. <laughs> Why not? Um, so, Russell is going to repair oil rigs in the North Sea immediately after this, so he thought he'd just save time and wear this as his race suit. <laughs> We've got the carts ready to go. We're going out for three laps of practice in just a moment. It's just a warm up. We're basically just going to scrub the shine off these tires. What's the plan? Because I'm following you, so let's scrub all the tires. So the plan is we are going to do two laps, not the full three. So an out lap and an in lap, no time laps. Gently bring the tires in. So okay. no deliberate scrub, just drive. So no in. weaving. No weaving. Just drive. Because I'll, I'll weave on the out lap of the race because we need to get temperature. I don't want temperature in this session. I don't want an extra heat cycle. Right. I want the tires to stay cold. I just want to take the shine off the top, but I want them to be brand new still for the rest. That's it. Cool. That's the task. That's what cool. we're going to go do. Breakfast of champions. How did the warm up go? Really slow. I had this bloke in front of me who just drove really ridiculously slowly, and you know, the wheel stayed on. So, and it's nice to have time to actually clean the top. I'm going to show you just how much scrub I wanted to do in that session. And we've got to run these tyres all year, so we want as little life taken out of them as possible, but in particular today, you want them as fresh as possible to start the first race. You can see it's still shiny, so just here, there's still some oils, a little bit shiny. That will go once we lean on the tyre a little bit. Obviously, all of the centre here is a dull matte grey, but it's had absolutely no real temperature put in. We've just scrubbed off the top layer of oils and releasing agent, ready to race, and they should come up really nice and sticky. For the first flying lap. So we're about 10-15 minutes out from our very first race of the season. We've been building up to this the whole winter. Alex and I have completely stripped and rebuilt the car. They were down to the bare frame. You've seen the build videos on this channel. It's now the moment of truth. We've done the testing, we've done the practice. It's, it's, it's the whole thing. You just came over and said, is everybody really excited? It's all really exciting. There's this excitement, but a level of apprehension as well. There's a there's a tense feel across the paddock because everyone's getting ready to get going. So let's go. So, after a winter of waiting, finally the new GX UK series gets underway and I happen to be starting on the grid next to Alex Van Jean. Who would have thought it? I'm hoping to not stay here for very long. Alex, I'm going to absolutely destroy you. I think I'm wishing you good luck, but I'm actually just saying I, I hope you fall to the back. Obviously, I want Alex to do as well as possible, just not as well as me. We've got championship favourite, in my eyes over here, number 28, Andy Hicks. And on the front row with him, we've got Richard Melton Baxter, Tom Stalker straight in front of me as well. Russell Endine, actually, very, very rapid. Number 14 is a bit more unknown. He's running a camera. Oh.
and so are we on a rear. And then we were on track for our single formation lap, getting as much heat into the tyres as possible before we waited for the national flag to be dropped just past the start line to signal the start of the first race of the season. Now the first corner here at Fullback is a long right-hander, so it makes it very important to get to the right-hand side as early as you can, to overtake the people in the left lane, as well as to block off anyone behind you from overtaking you. And on this start, I managed to get up to third position immediately. It worked out perfectly, there was just enough of a gap to get through, and I slotted in front of Alex Van Jean. And then I had Tom Anger and Andy Hicks in the lead to try and catch, and it seems certainly in this early phase, I'm a bit more confident with the entry speed into the chicane, so I'm straight onto the tail of Tom, and then my only thoughts are to try and line him up for an easy move into the hairpin. And it looks like it's going to be easily done, but I actually misjudged my own rear tyre temperature and lock the rears and go a little bit deep, making side-to-side -side contact with Tom. So that's my fault, hold my hands up to that. I was looking for a penalty flag for that, but it didn't come, so I was happy to hold onto the place and then set off in pursuit of Andy Hicks in the lead, see if we can close him down. And so obviously at this point, all I'm doing is just trying to push as hard as possible and now try and make as few mistakes as possible. But I do want to close down that gap. Andy turns in a little bit late to the chicane. I seem to make up a couple of cart lengths there. And I start to think maybe there's something in this. Maybe I can get close to him. And once I'm behind him, a slipstream is going to help me out. Andy goes deep into the top corner there, misses the apex. And that really does start to give me a sniff of catching him. If he makes any more of those errors, I should be able to get onto his tail. So again, I'm looking to focus on using as much curb as possible into these chicanes, really minimise the distance, maximise the entry speed I can carry, and then in this fast left-hander try and carry as much speed as possible without getting any significant understeer or oversteer. Nice clean line into the hairpin here, and it looks like we're basically holding station at this point. I haven't quite managed to drag him in. Let's see if we can make some time up through the dog leg. Andy turns in a little bit late for that as well. I'm carrying a little bit more speed. I think we've gained a couple of tenths at this point. And I'm thinking here, we're just getting a smidge of a slipstream. It's just going to be starting to help us out here. Maybe if he starts going defensive, we're going to gain even more time. At the moment, though, Andy's sticking to the racing line, although I use a bit more curb a bit earlier and get closer to the apex in the inside here. And again, I think maybe a tenth or two we've closed in. So it's going to be down to the next couple of corners, whether or not we can get really close to him. And again there, just a few inches wide of the apex at the top corner, I'm smelling blood. I'm really trying to push and I want this race win. So again, let's go absolutely banzai into the chicane. And now we're definitely in the slipstream. We've closed right onto his tail and I can smell his exhaust fumes. Now I'm thinking about where we can try and overtake. And I'm going to try and size him up to see if there's any weakness. And he gets a little bit sideways on the entry to the hairpin there, but still gets a very, very good exit. But I know this time we're going to have a good run down the main straight. Maybe we can make something happen. We're looking pretty similar through the dogleg section there. As we exit onto the long straight, I think maybe I can draw him in. I'm in the slipstream, should be able to get closer. Don't seem to be able to get very close in the slipstream. Seems to hold station. So again, then it's going to be into the chicane. That's where we close up a little bit under braking. And he gets sideways in the middle there. Can I then get a run on him on the exit? Not this time, but we are drawing close. So now really close to the back of him. He gets a good exit, going wide on the exit of the top corner there. It's not really an overtaking opportunity into the next chicane. Very, very dangerous with the tyre barriers on both sides. But I know I can use more kerb, take a better line. He's gone really deep in the middle there. And I come out in a similar position, just a little bit closer. So is there a sniff of an opportunity down into the hairpin? Not this time, not close enough. But Andy gets a massive swapper on, so I should be able to get a much quicker exit. Somehow he still comes off the corner quicker. But at this point, I can smell a weakness. I can see that there are some mistakes creeping in. He's under pressure, and he really wants his first GX UK race win, and I want to take it away from him. So I'm going to try everything I can to get through. Is there a space on the grass even on the right? No, he doesn't leave enough room. And I can't quite get down the inside. It's just a little bit too tight this time. I don't want side-to-side -side contact. Don't want to throw this away. He's gone a little deep again in the chicane, but still gets a good exit. And now he's going defensive. Now he's starting to change his lines because he knows that I'm there. He uses a lot of curb there on the inside of the long right hand. I'm not sure that was intentional. And we're just going to have to keep trying. Going to have to keep buzzing around his rear here and see if we can force a mistake. Now he's starting to use more curb. He knows he needs to push harder. So Andy's gone into the chicane a little bit quicker that time. I'm just trying to hang on to the back, wait for an opportunity, wait for a gap to appear. Again, deep. 
He's missed the apex into the hairpin there and still somehow managed to get a better exit than me. I'm going to get slightly frustrated at this point because it doesn't matter what I do. I can't seem to get that run on the exit. It's very, very difficult to overtake here. But now he's gone deep in the dog leg. I managed to almost get alongside and I want to use that momentum. I want to go to the right hand side. He knows I want to do that. So he completely covers it off. Very, very difficult to go around the outside here. And cleverly, he pushes me wide on the entry. And that not only protects his position, it means I can't gain any advantage through the chicane. Still, though, going a little bit defensive into the top corner, but he manages to get back to the racing line ready for the corner. This time, easily makes the apex. And you can see we are both now pushing extremely hard. I don't know where I'm going to try and get through at this point. I really don't know what the opportunity is. I know I'm faster at this phase of the race. I just can't get past. And this track is just so, so tough to get a clean pass. A little snap of oversteer there from Andy. So I look to the inside, but he goes middle of the track on the way through the hairpin. Again, slight miss of the apex, but it doesn't seem to affect him. But it doesn't matter that I'm quicker into the dog leg here. I can't use that speed. So I'm going to deliberately back off, try and get a good run onto the straight. Now we're very, very close. We should be able to get a very good slipstream this time. If only we could get far enough alongside. You see, I thought about the right-hand side. I really want that inside line into the first chicane. But Andy is clever enough to not give it to me. Big snap of oversteer from Andy on the brakes into that chicane. That actually compromises both of us that time, so he hasn't lost out. There's only one line through there anyway, and I can't drive through him, so we're going to have to try something different. Andy's gone a little bit wide on the exit of the long right-hander. Can I get close into the next chicane? Certainly not enough room to get past. So let's just see if we can get a better exit than him. Again, definitely tighter, definitely get a good run, but not close enough to make a move into the next corner. It's going to have to be hairpin. Although having said that, just a few corners later, I do manage to get up the inside of Andy through the dogleg section, and I'm then on the outside going onto the main straight. We nearly had that run we were after, but still there's no way through at this point. Andy's placing his car in all the right places just to prevent me getting enough of an overlap to get through. So let's fast forward to the final lap where an opportunity finally arises. We're approaching traffic, which is always an opportunity, but Andy also gives me a massive gap to the inside into the hairpin, which I gladly take. I'm alongside on the exit, but Andy still manages to just draw ahead. And at this point, our bumpers interlock twice. It could have gone a lot worse for both of us there. And really, that's my fault. Just trying to take advantage of the back marker, but it didn't pay off at all. Andy came off fine, and I was lucky to just about maintain second place. With Tom Angia almost pushing me across the finish line. So, great race from Andy, a thoroughly deserved first victory, but I was determined to not make it easy for him for the rest of the day. Great job, man. That was really, really good. Your defending was epic. There was, from what I could see, no way through, except on the final lap when I went for a move, but then there was traffic in the way, whatever, it didn't happen that time. So let's try again next time. Uh, awesome, fun race. So more of that, please. 10 points if you can work out why Danny is cutting his sprocket. Post in the comments below. If you want your Oops Black and Orange Flag t-shirt, you can grab that from the Brad Philbot store on the bottom of this YouTube channel. Just click on the link below and grab yourself one of our many excellent karting themed t-shirts. So on to heat two. This one was much more straightforward. I was starting in third position for this one on the right hand side, on the correct side of the grid. And it was really just going to be a case of trying to get into the lead as early as possible and extending a gap over all my rivals, trying to finish as far in front of Andy as possible. So the only question mark really was where was I going to be able to make the move and how early can I make the move for the lead? So we're following Simon Fuller in cart 42. He's got a bit of a gap at this point. Definitely I can feel him faster. And then he makes quite a big error on cold tyres into the second chicane gives me an easy run up the inside and really from this point onwards I didn't look back it was quite a straightforward race so I'm not going to show you the full race this time but what we will do is show you the very fastest lap of the event so the lap record lap for the GX UK seniors and that's coming up right now
So that was a race win and I was now sitting at the top of the standings for the day with a P2 and a P1 in my pocket. But it would all come down to the final race where I was going to start in 14th position on the outside, the row I didn't want to have and with some fast drivers directly ahead. As we already know, the outside line at Turn 1 is a huge disadvantage, so I'd have to think outside the box if I was going to move forward in this race. I hadn't managed to get back over to the right hand side on the exit of that first chicane and that allowed Andy straight back through and that was the last thing I wanted because I just needed to stay in front of him to get pole in the final. What I hadn't banked on was Russell Endine making his way up from 11th to 2nd place in this race and actually scoring enough points to outscore both me and Andy and take pole position for the final. But that was still in the future, at this point I needed to battle back past Andy and try and reclaim what I thought was pole for the final. So at this point, several laps into the race, I thought I had this covered. I was ahead of Andy and I went defensive into the top corner to stop him getting up my inside. But he got a much better run on the exit and managed to drag past despite a little bit of contact from me side to side as I carelessly nudged his side pod. From that point on, I just wanted to stay on his tail, try and maybe get back through later on, but make sure I didn't finish more than one position behind. Because in my mind, this still guaranteed me pole position for the final. Every move Andy made, I had to shadow and try and make the same one immediately afterwards so there was no cart between us and I'd be able to take that crucial right-hand side grid spot on pole position. But then, disaster, as Andy gets a great run on Tom Purchase on the exit of the second bus stop and I choose the wrong lane. To be honest, I think if I went behind Andy I still wouldn't have made it around the outside of Tom, but I tried to immediately pass him on the inside into the hairpin and it doesn't work. It doesn't pay off, I've lost more ground and I've given myself a mountain to climb with just one lap remaining. And on the final lap now, Tom doesn't go wide on the entry to the hairpin, so no opportunity for me there. And really, there's not another overtaking spot until the top corner, which we're not going to reach on this lap. But I managed to get alongside him into the final corner and just keep a nose alongside to drag to the line around half a tenth of a second in front. You outfox me. 
So after some quick repairs to Alex Van Gien's steering column, it was nearly time for the final. But first, we needed to catch up with today's pole sitter, Russell Endine. Going to be a good race though. Is it going to be a good race though? I think so. Uh, there's a lot that could happen. Yeah, looking forward to that. So the viewers are going to find out because you're going to see what happens in that race right now. So this is the grid for the grand final. We've got Russell Endine. Debut race in GX UK. Pole position, I'm lining up second, two OTKs, similar age. We've then got a barrel of Lee Jones, and then we've got Andy Hicks's CRG in third place. We're on the outside for turn one. Let's see what happens with that, it's not ideal. I'd rather be on the right hand side, should have qualified on pole. Let's see what we can do. So, as you've already heard, I was slightly concerned about starting on the outside, but I've managed to get around the outside at turn one before. So, as long as the right hand starting road didn't get a better start than the left, we did have a chance of maybe hanging on to our P2 at Turn 1. OK, so that didn't quite go to plan. Not only have we lost our P2, we're actually down to fourth position as a consequence of a little bit of standard turn one contact. But no major drama. As long as Andy doesn't get straight past Russell, we're still in the fight here. Oh, well that happened immediately, so no problem. We'll just take it nice and easy into the hairpin and... We were bundled wide into another car and unfortunately we've now lost several positions. This is gonna be a difficult fight back if we're gonna salvage anything from this final. But this is a long championship and every position here is going to count towards the standings at the end of the season. So we get past Tom Stalker and we then work together for a few laps with him pushing me along down the straights to help us close in on the next pack with the first car in line being Lee Jones. So then a couple of laps later, with some help from my new best friend, Tom Stalker, in the neon orange cart behind, we managed to get around Lee into the second bus stop, and then it's time to start pushing ahead to the lead pack. So after a bit of a nightmare first half of the race, we're back up to fifth position and onto the tail of the pole sitter, Russell Ending. And that was it. With fourth place secured, there was no way to catch the next pack. They were just too far in front to close up to in the remaining laps. Oh, sorry, man. Thanks for the push. No, I thought if that's any way I'm going to get past Lee. Yeah. It, uh, oh, yeah, that helped me. Too. Right, I've got to film this now. We're back in the tent after the final. Basically, final wrap up. You've seen what happened in the video. We got pushed wide on the first lap. That basically dictated the rest of the race. I tried my hardest to come back. We got back up to anyway. fourth. That was the best we could do. Fastest lap, though. So. You know, that's a bit of a consolation. Onwards and upwards at Lid in a few weeks' time. No upgrades for the car. We'll just try even harder. You know, this is one of those things you've got to keep out of trouble. So, next time, we'll try and keep out of trouble. Well done to the podium, in particular Andy, who was rapid all weekend. See you at the next one. Thanks for watching. Bye.